It's time to turn your followers into dollars, baby. The power of social media in your agency and your career. That's exactly what we're diving into of this episode of The Buzz. With that being said, let's start the show. If somebody is listening and you brought up talking about your product every single day, is there a Mm. formula that you have found is a good balance between I'm rooting for the chiefs and you need life insurance in your financial plan. That's what it was. So if you're only talking about the insurance piece, you become a commercial, an infomercial, right? I want you to become this recommendation resource. I want you telling me, this is where I got this top. This is where I got my phone case. This is where I bought my Stanley. This is where I bought these earrings or whatever it is that you actually spend your money on. This is what I watched, your energy. What are all the things so that they'll watch the show, they'll buy the top, they'll buy the earrings and they love them. So that when you say, this is the insurance plan that you need, it's a no brainer for them because they already trust all of the recommendations that you make. The other part of that is that it, it teaches people how to sell because I don't know what it is, but if you love this pen, you could sell it no problem. And you could tell people, I love it. It has 10 different colors. It's on Amazon. It comes in a pack of four. I love it. Whatever. That's literally selling. But you're not making a commission off of that. So it's not weird. But if you're talking about something that you actually believe in and you like, but you could make some money if you sell it, people get weird about it. So I think continually, like consistently selling all different types of things recommending to your Mm. um, audience makes you feel more comfortable as a salesperson and it makes kind of blurs the line as well of like Mm. wait does she make money off of that it doesn't matter because they trust you Mm. um because you've earned that recommendation resource i I love love that that. yeah man that's good stuff hey thanks so all right i'm gonna get a little vulnerable right now because social media is an area where i've struggled probably over the last year to two years just because before I felt like I was super consistent with it. I'd post in my stories. I'd post like whatever, one time a day at a minimum, building a great brand. And then like I kept getting on social media and I felt like it was a time suck and I felt like it would give me anxiety. It would, my comparison all of a sudden, like I'd see other coaches in the industry. So, oh shit, they look like they're doing amazing. Like, and so I've tried to limit myself to only an hour a day. And mm-hmm. now and now I'm like, which an hour is still a lot, but I feel like I can't be on as much or okay, the posts I'm making need to be much more intentional. I'm not posting as many stories, but I still wanna be consistent with it and show people, but at the same time, I don't want it to be a, a time suck where I'm just getting on and scrolling all the damn time. So somebody that may be struggling like myself right now, Colleen, because I'm a believer in social media. I think you do need an amazing brand. Yeah. I think it's a great way to create that human connection piece. What advice would you give for somebody in my situation? Oh, that's such a good question. So first of all, I want to say, like, I'm glad that you have found yourself pulling back. You have a time limit for yourself. A lot of people don't know my before all of this, like Instagram book stuff, my real, real job. I'm a, a mental health counselor by education and trade. And I'm always, when people talk about this makes me stressed or this makes me anxious, I'm so glad you started to like do what you needed to do to not lose your mind. But I also think what we need to do, the recommendations would, that I would give, I would really limit the amount of peers that I follow. So like you're seeing other coaches, that's not great for you because you're not creating content for any of those people. So why are you following them? right? Like they're not it. I would be following, like if I knew the avatar of person, I would go to maybe go to that, you know, coaches content and I would go to their comments and I would find out who's in there asking questions and I would follow them because those are the people that I want to connect with. Those are the people that I want to like me and get to know me. It's not this other coach. And I find that when I'm watching peers and their content, then I start thinking, oh, that's how I have to be talking. That's the content I need to be creating. That's what we're doing now. And it totally stifles any sort of creativity. And the creativity is what's going to make people like you. And then the other thing is really just to treat it like an office. When I open Instagram during the day, like I know that I'm on there to either post a piece of content or engage with people who are 
you know, commenting on a con- piece of content or in my DMs, I don't scroll. It's it's like I'm going in to check my emails. I know what I'm doing. Um, and I think having treating it like an office space and not like a party, it's not social hour every time I open the app, that helps a lot as well. Andy, I would love to know what you see, not only yourself, but your peers, those that you're teaching, what are they doing really well? And what are some of the mistakes that they should avoid? First, let's start with the mistakes. When I see people using LinkedIn, the first one is using it like a sales platform. So you make a connection with a prospect and then you instantly send them a message to try to schedule a coffee or a call. No. Boo. I hate that, man. Like I got people sliding up in my DMs all the time trying to sell me shit. I know. I feel like it's like an OnlyFans. It's that automated spam. And people are just more more skeptical of the sales pitch than ever before, right? That's number one. Number two, likes and comments don't pay the bills. If you're going to create content just for the likes and the comments, it's not you're not going to do well on LinkedIn. You're, you're going to post content that you think the algorithm wants versus doing the one job you're supposed to do, which is talk to your prospects. And then the third mistake is thinking the content's going to create the magic. We work with a lot of advisors who want to use LinkedIn more effectively. The problem is they go and they start creating content. And they're like, well, why am I not getting any inbound leads? Well, the content builds the awareness. You still got to do the work in the DMs to create activity. And so I think those are the three biggest mistakes I see people make. What people are doing right is when they get very clear about who their ideal prospect And they go to LinkedIn and they put their blinders on. They put their guardrails on, not looking at what anybody else is doing. And they just create content for their prospects. They make connections with target prospects. And then they use DMs to interact with prospects. It will lead to activity. I firmly believe, guys, if you put the work in every day on this, you almost can't not create activity. But you have to know who you're trying to target in the first place. So. Let's talk about the DMs before we, because I do want to go back to ideal customer. So we're drumming up business and you're talking about you're actually selling in the DMs. What's that conversation even look like? Yeah. So I'll share a little great tip, a little, some, some hacks. I hate the word hacks, but I'll share some hacks with you. So the two ways we reach out to people or we teach our clients to reach out to people is if you've got the premium or navigator subscriptions, there's actually an analytic in your profile that says who's viewed your profile. And if you've got one of the paid subscriptions, you actually get to see an unlimited list of who's looking at you. Our thought there is, why not use what we call the store clerk approach? If you walked into a store today, what is one of the first things the clerk's going to say to you? Courtney, is there anything I can help you with? Well, if you're just looking, you're going to say, no, I'm good. Just looking. But if you walk into a hardware store and you've got a six inch screw and you need a dozen of these and they say, can I help you? You're going to be like, what aisle are these in? We take the same approach to your profile. When somebody's looking at it, they're there for two reasons. Maybe they're just looking, trying to figure out who you are, or maybe they came for a reason. Why not send a message that says, hey, Courtney, was in my profile. You noticed you jumped in. Is there anything I can help you with? We have converted more calls from that message than anything else because there was a reason they came and all it took was me saying, hey, anything I can help you with? That made them go, yes, I'd like to connect. Okay, so let's talk about how you're setting that up. How much time is that taking every single day? Because the pushback that I immediately am like, okay, is this going to consume my life? Because my business as an insurance agent is to sell policies and to serve my customers. So let's talk about the strategy of actually getting this done. So that that strategy I just taught you would probably take 10 minutes a day. It's Mm. a matter of going in your profile, looking at who's looking at you, and one by one sending a message. Now, here's a cool little feature. And it's hard to believe not enough people know it exists. Did you know you can leave voice messages on LinkedIn? So Andy, I was going to ask you this. So would you recommend text? Would you recommend audio? Or would you recommend a video? Great question. I'd probably go audio first, followed by video, followed by text. The only reason I would put audio over video is some people still view a video as possibly spam. But what I, the reason I lean into one or the other, definitely over text, is if I leave you a voice note, I can convey what I'm trying to get across a lot better than me trying to write it right. A lot, of, a lot gets lost in translation when you're writing. 
And so if I send Mike a message, say, hey, Mike, I was looking at my profile. I just noticed you jumped in. Anything I can help you with? That sounds very different than me typing that. And so I would say audio or video are two great ways to stand out for sure. <laughs>